A breast cancer diagnosis is devastating for any woman, whether she's a teacher, a retail associate, or even a stay-at-home mom. It's just as devastating for women whose career puts them in the spotlight. In 2008, actress Christina Applegate opted to have a double mastectomy when the cancer was found in only one breast. Applegate's mother was a repeat breast cancer survivor, so Christina said she wanted to reduce the chance that the cancer would spread or come back. Just this year, actress Angelina Jolie underwent a double mastectomy when she was told she had an 80% chance of getting breast cancer due to a genetic influence. Jolie's decision has been called courageous, empowering, and even heroic. But singer Melissa Etheridge, a breast cancer survivor herself, thinks it's actually the opposite of those things. Etheridge told us weekly that she wouldn't call Jolie's decision a brave one. In fact, she said she thinks it's the most fearful choice you can make when confronting anything with cancer. Well, more and more women diagnosed with breast cancer are making the same decision as Applegate and Jolie, even those in early stages. But is a mastectomy really better treatment for the majority of those diagnosed? A new study is stirring up the debate. It's a decision more than 232,000 women diagnosed with breast cancer will have to make in this country this year. I have girlfriends that have gone through this, unfortunately. Some chose a lumpectomy, some chose a mastectomy. But Dr. Shelley Hoang says more and more women are opting for mastectomies. There's this trend towards women just doing more. So if they have a choice between lumpectomy and mastectomy, they'll choose to have a mastectomy. Often removing both breasts, even if only one breast has cancer. The latest numbers show 70% of those women don't have a proven medical reason. That's where Dr. Huang hopes a new study she led at Duke University could help. The team analyzed more than 112,000 women with early stage breast cancer. About half had a lumpectomy with radiation. The other half underwent a mastectomy. You would think that the more surgery you did, the more aggressive you were, the better patients would do from their breast cancer, but we found that that wasn't actually true. Those who received less invasive treatment in all age groups had improved survival rates. For the majority of women who have the choice, they don't need to feel like they are being pressured to do the more aggressive surgery to get a better outcome. After three rounds of chemo, Jennifer's lump disappeared without surgery. But she says if it came down to it, she'd do whatever it takes to make sure she survives breast cancer. I mean. We can live without parts of our body, you know, we, we, our kids and our families need us. Three special reasons for Jen to keep moving on. While a lumpectomy may prove to be more advantageous to most with early stage breast cancer, the authors of the study say a double mastectomy could make more sense for a woman with a strong family history of cancer or for those who've tested positive for genetic mutations, as was the case for Angelina Jolie. Uh, genetic testing revealed that Angelina Jolie had a mutation in the BRCA gene, putting her in a high-risk category. So what about the rest of us? Should all women be tested? Well, according to PRMC, the average woman does not need to be tested unless she has a strong family history of breast cancer. For example, a mother, a sister, an aunt, or a cousin, and especially if they were under the age of 50 when diagnosed. Now PRMC offers genetic counseling and testing. A genetic counselor reviews your family history and determines if testing should be done. The counselor would also interpret the testing. The RMC says most insurance companies pay for the counseling, but don't always pay for the testing. Well, that could change based on a Supreme Court ruling made in June saying that the company that biotechnology companies can't patent isolated human genes. Well, the decision to have a lumpectomy or a mastectomy is also one that should be made with your doctor. So what's the difference between the two? Well, a lumpectomy is a procedure in which cancer cells or other abnormal tissue is removed. They are sometimes called breast-saving surgeries because only part of the breast is removed. A mastectomy involves the removal of all tissue in one or both breasts. They are often performed if you have two or more tumors in different parts of the breast. The underlying idea of a mastectomy is to remove any potentially problematic tissue in the breast before the cancer becomes malignant. And if you would like to read more about the difference between a lumpectomy and a mastectomy, go to delmarvalife.com and click on the show tab. Well, still to come on Delmarva Life, every night there are so many people here on Delmarva who make their bed under a bridge or in the streets. We're going to learn more about the organization HALO, how it helps feed the hungry and meet the basic needs of many of the homeless. We're also going to find out how you can help. 
Plus, we're in the kitchen with Halo, learning about and sampling some of the food the shelter offers. A little later, technology is really impacting the way we bank, but how secure can it be when we're plugging our personal information into the cyber world? We'll find out. But first, so many of us spend the day typing away. Dr. Oz has more on how we can curb computer pain and strain. Sitting at computers for long periods of time can restrict circulation, cause muscle pain, and make you drowsy. Here's how you can keep it in ergonomic alignment. Position the monitor so your head isn't tilted. The top reading line should be at or slightly below eye level. Sit straight in the chair with knees slightly higher than the seat. Keep your forearms parallel to the floor so your shoulders aren't raised or uneven. And don't flex your wrists when you're keyboarding. Exercise at your seat every hour. You can even set an alert on your computer calendar to remind you. Rotate your head in a circle, do shoulder shrugs, and stand and bend like you are bowing. And get up and walk around every few hours. And finally, don't forget to blink to prevent dry eyes. 